Shalom to the Lord's elect. Let's begin this lesson by giving honor and glory to the power of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, and his only begotten son, the root and offspring of King David, the bright and morning star, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the beginning and the ending, the Alpha and the Omega, our big brother, our hero, Yahweh Shai. Let's give double honors to our head apostles out of the great millstone, the bishop, the elders that taught us this truth, and salutation, peace to my fellow laborers out there doing this work in sincerity, and the large multitude, men, women, whom our King, our Redeemer, Yahweh Shai, is going to have mercy upon. I pray this message find you in perfect peace. And let's continue to remember our brothers and sisters across the Florida, across Tampa, because we know that this hurricane just made a landfall. Let's continue to remember them in prayers. We thank the Lord, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, first and foremost, for bringing our captivity to an end. Our captivity is here. Okay, our captivity is coming to an end and our kingdom is here. Our kingdom is fast approaching. Putin made a comment today. Israel made a comment. It was yesterday. Um, and uh, we're going to get right into it. Putin is ready for America. Israel is ready to destroy Iran. So we know how this thing is going to play out. We know who's going to win. Because according to Bible prophecy, America and Israel is going to be desolate. But before we get right into it, again, let me say the Shabbat Shalom to the elect again. Shabbat Shalom. Okay, let's get right into it. We're going to do it a little bit different today. The Spirit just moved me to, you know, bring a few precepts and give thanks to the Lord. Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai for first and foremost bringing our captivity to an end. We are here. The kingdom is fast approaching. Because you're going to see that these nations are ready to destroy each other. And that's exactly how this movie was written. But let's give thanks to the Lord first and foremost. It says Psalm 181 verse 1. It said, Praise ye the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. It said, Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the height. Psalm 150 verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the power in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Why are we doing this? Family, the hopeful elect, we are extremely blessed. We are extremely thankful for what the Lord has done for us. The fact that he has given us this word. We know that according to Isaiah 33 verse 6, it says knowledge and wisdom is going to be the stability of the times. When everybody is losing their mind, we are going to be what? That's right. We're going to be stable, family, because we have this knowledge. This word is going to guide us. And we say, Barakata Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rekakadash. It says here, Psalm 147, 12. It said, Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Always people before a place talking about the Israelite. You so called Negroes, Latinos, African Americans, Native American. This message is for you. You are the one that wrought his judgment, pursuing to the book of Zephaniah, chapter 2, verse 2. You wrought the Lord's judgment. So he asking you before the decree come forth. He says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Okay, this message, the Lord is raising up his men day in and day out. Bringing you this gospel. God, family, that's right. Day in and day out, the Lord is showing his love unto the elect. By feeding you with this for his plans. Family, you have the blueprint. You know what? It's not like you are in the dark. That's why the book of... Um, What's his name? Peter says, he says, Yea, brethren, there's no need for me to write unto you. He said, there's, there's, there's no need for me to write unto you. Because why? You have the knowledge and the wisdom. You see? Psalm 150, one, Psalm 156, sorry, Psalm 150 verse 6. It says, Let everything that have breath praise the Lord, Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. Praise ye the Lord. Psalm 147 verse 1. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our power. For it is pleasant and praise is comely. Every moment you get, the more the Lord woke you up this morning. You thank him. 
Not everybody that went to bed last night was able to get up this morning. Not everybody have a place to put their head. We have a lot of homelessness. We have people sleeping in shelter, people sleeping under bridges. But the Lord has woken you up. He has put food on your table. That's right. Give thanks. Live a life of thanksgiving. Always appreciating the little things. Psalm 111 verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord, Yahweh, with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. Psalm 117 verse 1. Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. I will praise the Lord, Yahweh, according to his righteousness. And Psalm, 1, sorry, Psalm 17, sorry, Psalm 7 verse 17. I will praise the Lord, Yahweh according to uh, his righteousness and will sing praise to the to the, uh, to the name of the Lord uh, the most high I will greatly Psalm 109 30 I will greatly praise the Lord with my mouth yea I will praise him among the multitude and we say Barakata Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai he shows what let's get this precept and eh? What are you by Shem Show you how much the Lord loves us. We can we can the Lord loves us. Let's go Psalm 140. Mm. Mm. <sighs> no, Psalm 140. Psalm 147. Psalm 147. Psalm 147. He says here, Psalm 147. We're going to pick it up from verse 18. He sendeth out his word and melteth, melteth them. He causeth his wind to blow and the waters to flow. He showed his word unto Jacob. Listen to that. Unto Jacob. That is, Jacob's name was changed to Israel, the 12th tribe. That is why we are giving thanks. The Lord could have made it, that's right, he could have given the blessings to the Edomite. He could have given the blessings to any other nations. But he gave the blessings to who? To Jacob, Isaac, and what? Sorry, from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob had what? The 12th tribe. That the blessing came upon us. We say, Barakata Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahushai. We can't say thank enough. We can't thank the Lord enough. That's why we are waiting, waiting for that day that we'll be face to face with the king who gave him his life. Gave his life, his body to bring us back to the Lord, Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahushai. We're waiting to see Yahweh Shai face to face so we can personally thank him. Even that is not even going to be enough. He said he sent his, he said he sendeth out his word. No, verse 19 again. And. Eh? Verse 19, it says, He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgment unto Israel. So if anybody tells you that the whole nation can make it, then the whole nation is going to receive salvation. Family, run away from them. They have no clue what they're talking about. This is a family affair. This is a family affair. The 12th tribe. I know we've been scattered among all these nations. Yes, but the blessings still belong to Israel. That's why the angels will come and they're going to separate what? The elect. Okay, that, 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 that Yahweh Shai said in the book of Matthew 24 verse 30. The elect are all Israelites. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgment unto Israel. He says what? He have not dealt so with any nation i'm reading it slowly so people there are people with slow bellies out there thinking that the lord is coming to save everybody holding hands and singing kumbaya saying that oh we don't want to offend anybody you see the lord is all about love love shut the hell up this softness everybody we gotta everybody gotta you, you gotta you gotta you gotta just trim your ways to seek love the Lord is not soft. The Lord is a man of war. He's a man of war. Stand for something. Stand for what? That's right. You stand for everything. I mean, you have these people here. They see wickedness and they endorse it. The Lord hates wickedness. 
The Lord is not coming to save everybody. The Lord is coming to destroy this place. America, Babylon, the great is going to be set on fire. We're going to bring the news very shortly. Putin said something yesterday. It's over. We are living at the end now. We, this is it. He said, he have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgment, they have not known it, known them. Let me, let me go to the proper translation. Eh? Psalm 147 verse 20. This should be posted what? This should be posted in every plantation Christianity church. That the Lord doesn't love everybody. The Lord is not coming to save the nation, the whole world. No. People begging you. Oh, you go. Listen, today you have to better give your life to Christ. Jesus. Give your life to Jesus. Call Jesus. Jesus wants you. Jesus wants you. Have you lost your mind? Read us, uh, I think John 44. No, John 6, 44. Let me see if I can, I can, I can, I can find it. Oh, my, my blood is boiling. Eh? John, John 6, 44. Let's go there quickly. You think freaky people say, oh, just give your... It's like Yahweh is waiting out there and begging people to come to him. Yahweh is not begging anybody. He has a remnant, an elect. They were picked before the foundation of this earth to receive this message. Yahweh Shai said this, John 6, 44. A man can come, it says, no man, listen to this. No man can come to me. How come the church don't, the, how come the church, the church don't teach it? No man, let me repeat this. No man can come to me except the father which have sent me. Draw him. Yahweh, he picked the, 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 the elect before the foundation of the earth. Read the book of Ephesians 1, 4. And many scriptures. No man can come to me except the Father, Yahweh, which have sent me, draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. This, that's right. The elect were picked by Yahweh. Begin before the foundation of the earth. Those spirits that were created, those spirits are back in their lot right now, doing what they're supposed to do. Taking heed to this message, believing in the name of our King, our Redeemer, Yahweh Shai. You can't just wake up one morning and you hear some of these people. This is the time to turn to Jesus. This is the time to turn to Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Be quiet. Leave this work here for the true prophets. The plantation Christianity have been preached all over the world. Nothing happened until the men raised up. Wow. The Hebrew Israelite. And now look at what is happening. The Hebrew reason. The moment the Lord started with our head apostles. Eh? And then the elders before them, the moment they started break teaching Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, telling the nation that, no, the Lord is going to destroy America. Micro to the CHIP, Revelation 13, 16, is a device that's going to go under your skin. And now look at it. Everybody's talking about the Hebrew Israelite. Because why? This is the end. The Lord kept the right. Kept the best wine for last. The, the wine that you, you, you drank in the plantation Christianity, that, that's right. That is now causing people to vomit. People are asking questions. But the Lord kept the best wine for last. And that best wine was given to 144,000. And the new song that they are singing right now, only few people are going to dance to this song here. And they are known as the elect. They were picked before the foundation of this earth. He said, no man can come to me except the Father which have sent me draw him. And I will raise him up at the last day. You hear that? So if anybody tells you, say again, he have not dealt so with any nation. You hear that? He had not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgment, they have not known them. Who were packed on the slave ships? Who were spread among all these nations? Who have been slaves? Who have been at the bottom of society all their lives? That's right. It's not the Amalek, the big nosed people, the, the, the small heart controlling the whole world. It's not them. It's the children of Israel, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, African American, Native American, the speckled birds spread among all these nations. That's right. We are the ones that have wrought the Lord's judgment. He have not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgment, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. That's right. Salvation is only for the children of Israel. And beloved, 
we're going to get right into it. I'm going to go to the book of Psalm 46. I'm going to read a few here and then we're going to get into the news. Lord willing, you are edified. Again, Shabbat Shalom. I hope this message again find you in perfect peace. Our King, our Redeemer, Yahweh Shai, is far, is coming. Don't get, don't have, a, don't have weak knees. Trust the process. Trust the process. Know what you are involved in. Eh? Know the mission. Understand the mission. Eh? Understand the mission. Study the mission. The mission is gonna, it's not going to be easy. But guess what? The Lord said He overcame it, and we also will, we shall overcome. Okay, no matter what comes our way, Yahweh Shai already made provisions for us. He's going to deliver us out of the tribulation. We're going to be in the midst of tribulation. It's also known as Jacob's trouble. But he said, Jacob shall be saved. Okay, that's Jeremiah 30 verse 7. Let's go here. Psalm 46 verse 6. The heathen raged. Why are they raging? They're thinking about what? The bricks. The bricks are going to be set up. Putin, Russia, Putin, China, uh, the Persian, the brick system are going to take over. No, I met Babylon saying that America says no. Our dollar is going to continue to be the world reserve currency. That's why they are all raging. But they don't know that this is the end. Putin is going to be used. The Russia, the BRICS, these nations are going to be used to destroy America. That's the last leg of the Roman Empire. Revelation 20. That little season that he is in right now. That's that little season we are in. They came through uh, the Renaissance and they came through the Renaissance in the 1400. It started with the Spanish, followed by the uh, the French and then the British. Out of the British came America. That's it. America is the nation going into perdition, the meaning destruction. Okay, Psalm 46 verse 6. The heathen rage, the kingdoms were moved. That's right, they are raging and the kingdoms about to are moved by who? Our king, our redeemer, Yahweh Shai. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. He's coming with thousands and thousands of angels to rain it on America. America is going to be the lake of fire. That's what it says in the Bible, Revelation 19, starting from verse 20. It says here, the Lord, Yahweh of hosts, is with us. You hear that? He's with us. Don't, don't have weakness, no matter what is coming our way. Hurricane here, this chaos here, civil war. That's right. They are about to fight each other. Rev Isaiah 19 and verse, verse 1 and 2 is about to be fulfilled. The Egyptians against the Egyptians. That's America, Americans against American. It is coming. He said, the Lord, your power of hosts is with us. And the power of who? Jacob is our refuge. Salah. You hear that? The power of who? Jacob is our refuge. Refuge is a place that you go for rest. And a place, a place that you go and hide yourself from danger. That's why Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. That's why he's the strong tower. That's the, the place that we what? We, we, we run into. Eh? There's no power like our power. The power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Eh? Verse, uh, Psalm 46 verse 8. It said, Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolation he have made in the earth. Everybody's about to see the destruction that is coming. This is all leading to the end and the destruction leading to the second coming of our Lord, our Redeemer, our Shai. That's why we give thanks. That's why we give thanks because you go and read the Baruch chapter 2. All the things that the Lord declared that is going to be happening in the end is happening. Lord willing, I can go there. This is the time that we are living in. So we have to glorify the Lord. Tell him how much we appreciate, how much we love him, what he has done for us in the land of our captivities. The fact that we are about to go home. We are tired, man. We are tired. We are tired. We are tired. You know, we are sick. Can't get enough sleep. You know, everybody is tired. Everybody is tired. You know, anyways, let's continue. It says here, Come, behold the works of the Lord Yahweh. What desolation he hath made in the earth. He, he, he maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. You hear that? Cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. He said, Be still and know that I am the power. That's right. Be still and know that I am the power. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord is about to be exalted. You think this is a man-made? No, no, no. There's a Lord. The Lord is in charge of everything that is happening. The Lord, Yahweh of hosts, is with us. Listen to that. It says again, Psalm, 1, Psalm 46, 11. The Lord, Yahweh of hosts, is with us. The power of Jacob is our refuge. Salah. Tawada. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Iran, 
and we have few articles to get into and family lord willing you are edified okay iran that's what the lord said be occupied in prophecy okay this should comfort you because we want this thing to pop off like yesterday but everything is on what the time the lord's schedule but it is coming the bible says or do the vision is for an appointed time at the end it shall speak and not lie it says do it terry it feels like it's taking forever wait for it it shall surely come because we know that the power that we serve is not a man that should lie it says the word that goes out of his mouth isaiah 55 11 shall not return to him void you hear that so it will come on the earth and will accomplish all his desires R roughly power phrasing the lord is coming to turn this place upside down iran we are ready to retaliate against israel putin the massacre listen to what putin said this is what caught my attention putin finally and eh, finally and eh, going against israel because that's why because it is going to be gog ezekiel 38 it's going to be russia along with its allies that's going to destroy israel and eh? listen to what putin said this is very very important the massacre in gaza is being done to enrich the u.s armies you hear that it said the massacre in gaza is being done to enrich the u.s armies because at the end of the day it talks about what the military industrial complex their stocks continue to rise up and they continue to kill and kill and kill and kill because that's what they are doing that's what the lord give them the sword as revelation 6 4 and also you go to the pale horse let me get it let me get it let's go to the book of revelation we are here you saw edom and eh? revelation 6 4 and uh let's go to even here eh? revelation 6 6 4 i can go to 6 4 but let's go to 6 8 let's start from uh verse no let's go to revelation 6 7 and when and when and when he had opened the fourth seal i heard the voice of the fourth b say come and see and and i look and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death that's what esau is death through his food came trails and wars this man here that's all he knows esau he himself proclaimed white man is death because you go to revelation 6 4 it tells you that uh, the lord and there went out another horse that was red that's they are the nation of red people esau came out red like a hairy garment okay and power was given to him that that what set there on to take peace from the earth. That's what they've been doing all over the world. Now, right now, their focus is on Lebanon. They just in just drop, just killing, killing anybody in in they killing women, children, babies. That's what they do. Self-proclaimed white man. That's right. The pale horse. That is him. Self-proclaimed white man. That's what he's been doing all over the world. But guess what? The kingdom is divided. And now. Russia says, no, we're going to join in. Russia is about to make a move because that's going to fulfill Ezekiel 38. And then also, uh, we're still waiting for 2 Ezra chapter 15, verse 28. That's right, the dragons of Arabia. Behold, a horrible vision. We are waiting because all the Arab nations are going to unite under Russia because that's what the, that's what the Lord said. And that's not what I'm saying. It's the Lord Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rekakadash. This is his word. We are just a mouthpiece to bring this out to glorify the Lord Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. And then it says here, it says here, and there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat, sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. Back to uh the Revelation 6 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth be say, Come and see. And I look and behold a pale horse, the same people, Esau Edom, and, and his and, and, and his name that sat that sat on him was death. That's why. Right. And hell followed him. Condition. Because everywhere these people go, family is nothing but hell. All the wars, family, starting with what? Starting from their rule, their rulership started with what? Alexander the Great. All from then. From then all the way now. When they came to the North America, what did they do to the so-called Native American, Native Indian, our brothers and sisters, the Ten Tribe? That's why right. killing, pillaging, stealing, raping. That's what everywhere these people go, death follows them. And I look 
and behold, a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him and power was given unto him over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. Do you have to explain who that person, that particular person was? Yeah. What did I, I was when he came? I was named uh, uh, even Christopher Columbus when he came here. He brought wild beasts, uh, dogs, wild dogs, family. That's why right, to the North Americas, everywhere these people go, family to do to what to destroy, pillage, family. They cut a, a womb, a mother's womb, a baby drop. They feed it to the and uh, to the dogs. That's Esau Edom. But let's hear what Putin has to say. The Iranians claim that there is a new leadership in Hezbollah. But here, Iran declares that it is ready to instantly retaliate with thousands of missiles and rockets at, at Israel 48 hours before Russia President Vladimir Putin meets with Iranian religious leader Ayatollah Khamenei in Kazakhstan. You hear that? So Putin is going to be meeting with what? The, 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 the what is it called? Uh, Khamenei, the Iranian, uh, what is it, Ayatollah. Okay, let's continue. It says here, let me read this again. Iran declares that it is ready to instantly retaliate with thousands of missiles and rockets at Israel. 48 hours before Russian President Vladimir Putin meets with Iranian religious leader Ayatollah Khamenei in Kazakhstan, and the U.S. states, states that they are concerned about the, deep, uh, the deepening of Russia's relationship with uh, a recognized troublemaker like Iran. How many countries have Iran, uh, Iran be dis be, been destroying all over the world? How many countries did uh, uh, Iran colonize? Esau, Edom, the, the Bible says the moment they come out of their mother's womb, they're speaking lies. Let's go here. That's what they do. And the, is it Psalm 49? Oh, Psalm 583. I think it's Psalm 583. Let's go there. I think it's Psalm 583, or is it 49? And I think it's Psalm 583. The Spirit said 583. Let's go there. Yeah, 583. It said the wicked are estranged. You see, estranged from the womb. The wicked are who eat or eat them. That's why right. self proclaimed white man. Border of wickedness, Malachi 1 4. The earth was given into the hand of the wicked. So, you know who is, do you know who the wicked is now? It's Esau, the wicked. There are we know there are wicked among all nations, but the wicked, the undisputed heavyweight champion of wickedness is Esau Edom. He said, The wicked are estranged from the womb, they go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. But let's continue. I want you, I want you, it says here, all this immediately, it says, All this. Immediately after the fear statement against the USA, let me read it. This okay, here, this is it. Sorry, again, let's get it. All this immediately after the fear statement against the United States by the Russian President Putin about what is happening in the Gaza Strip. Listen to what he says, and I'm gonna play the video. This is what Russia, this is what the president said. There is no excuse for the terrible events happening in Gaza, Gaza Strip. When you look at dead children, how women suffer, old people, of course, fits are clenched and tears come to your eyes. Washington's reaction is not to clench their fists in anger or tears. Their reaction is to send more weapons to continue the slaughter for their military industrial complex to make more profits. Listen to this speech here. Страшные события, которые сейчас происходят в секторе Газа, когда без разбора уничтожают сотни тысяч ни в чем не повинных людей, которым просто некуда бежать, негде укрыться от бомбардировок, ничем оправдать нельзя. Когда смотришь на окровавленных детей, на погибших детей, на то, как страдают женщины, старики, как погибают медики, yeah, that's what he said. Bloody, you know, kids blown up. But guess what? It's coming to an end though. 
because that's the same guy, Russia. I don't know whether it's going to be there, but listen, it is going to be Russia, according to Ezekiel 38, starting from verse 5. Persia, which is what? Iran was the first nation that the Lord said, we, Russia is going to be a guard. We've been here many, many times. We've gone through that whole chapter, but let's just go hit that point quickly and move on. Ezekiel 38, we say, Tawada Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Prophecy about Gog and the future invasion of what? Israel. The future invasion of who? Israel. That time is fast approaching. But here, verse 5, Ezekiel 38, 5. It said, Persia. You see, that's Iran. Modern day Iran. Ethiopia and Libya with them. All of them with shield and helmet. Not just, not, not just these nations. The Lord is also going to give Russia more nations. It said, Goma and all his band. The house of Togoma. That's modern day Turkey. Of the north quarters and all his bands and many people with it. There are going to be other nations joining Russia to destroy America and Israel. This is future prophecy. That's what we are waiting for. That's what we are waiting for. And that time is fast approaching. But here, let's get the next one. Now listen to what Gallant is saying. This is what the Israeli uh, defense minister from RT. Israel threatens Iran with DPS strike. What the hell is DPS strike? DP means what? A displaced person, a person who is forced to leave their home country because of a war or persecution. Let's see. Israel threatens Iran with DPS strike. Unless it's a deep strike. I don't know. Finally, I don't know. It said the Iranian won't know what... Listen to this. The Iranians won't know what hit them. Defense Minister Yoav Gallant has said, Israel response to the Iranian missile attack would be deadly, pinpoint accurate and surprising. Defense Minister Yoav Gallant has said, Tehran missile barrage pummeled Israel earlier this month in what was said to be reprisal for killings of heads of Hamas and Hezbollah, as, as well as a general of Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. The Iranian attack was aggressive but inaccurate, Galan said on Wednesday. In contrast, our attack will be deadly, pinpoint accurate, and most importantly, surprising. They will not know what happened or how it happened. They will just see the result. Yeah. That's right. And we are waiting. Because again, the Bible says what? Israel is going to be wiped off the map. That's what the Bible says. But Israel is going to be built back better. Because the, when Yahweh Shai's kingdom, it says that the street is going to be paved with gold. So the Lord is what? slowly removing everybody of that land. Because he's preparing the way for what? Our kingdom. Our Yahweh Shai's headquarters. So this thing here is about to be what? Turn upside down. The world is about to witness something that they've never seen before. The dragons of Arabia uniting to destroy Israel and America. America's judgment is written all over the Bible. And that's the time that we are living in. So family, you're supposed to rejoice. Covert intel. Netanyahu, this is from Haltena. Target. It says Netanyahu target selection so they contacted apparently there was a conversation between netanyahu the prime minister of israel and biden's administration yesterday it says israel prime minister benjamin netanyahu is now calling the u.s president joe biden who will reportedly be deciding which target israel can strike inside iran remember what the bible says in the book of jeremiah 49 20 let's get it 49 it says what the least of the flock these precepts are coming out every day family because that's what the lord says we should do if this is not something, this, if, if, you are, if you are tired, annoyed, because we're bringing this precept, our family, there are a lot of videos, a booty shaking videos out there, okay? Plantation Christianity is on the other end. You can enjoy, fill your boots because this message here is only for the elect. Only the elect, okay? Only the elect. Even if one person gets this message, mission accomplished, okay? We are only, this year, it's only to comfort the elect. You know, it's not about view. It's not about popularity. No. You see, Yahweh Shai gets all the glory. We're going to continue to bring this precept out every day just to glorify our power, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, to show you that he said this before the beginning, before the, sorry, before the foundation of this. This thing here were declared thousands and thousands of years ago. Eh? 
Jeremiah 49, 20. Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord that he have taken against what? Edom. Self-proclaimed white man. When Yahweh Shai comes, Isaiah 63, he's visiting who? Edom. A nation of people known. Today, they call themselves Caucasian. They call themselves white. They call themselves Europeans. That's why right. That's the people that he's coming to visit. Yes, we know our people are among them. But guess what? At the end of the day, they are the one ruling. The nation of Esau, Edom, they are ruling right now. They are sitting in the power seat. Your elite, Yahweh Shai is coming to visit them. Eh? He's not coming to sit down and have coffee. He's coming to destroy their kingdom. Okay? Jeremiah 49, 20. Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord, Yahweh, that he have taken against Edom and his purpose that he have purpose against the inhabitants of Teman. Surely the least of the flock, which is Israel, eh, shall draw them out. Shall draw who out? America, Babylon, the great. And surely he shall make their what? habitation desolate with them. And then you go here to Joel. It, pro, it, it came to mind. So let's go to the book of, uh, did I say Joel? Yeah. Well, jo, uh, no. Yeah, the book of Joel. Joel chapter, chapter 2 verse 20. Mm? It says here. It said, but I will remove far off from you the northern army, talking about America, and will drive them into a, a land barren and desolate. What land is barren and desolate? The Middle East. But they are, sorry, that whole region, Saudi Arabia. Eh? With his face towards the East Sea, which I believe is what? The uh, Euphrates. Eh? And his hinder, hinder part towards what? The outmost sea. This will be what? The Red Sea. And his thing shall come up. And his ill savour shall come up because he have done great things. That's what the Lord is coming to do. That's why it's just also known as what the war of Armageddon. America is going to be in the midst of it. America is going to be destroyed. Not just America army in the Middle East. No, America itself is going to be destroyed. That is what is coming. That's what the Lord says. That's what we're supposed to preach. And hear what, uh, what is it called? Uh, the foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, said, the foreign minister of Russia. Listen to what he said. Russia, American bases are among first targets if Ukraine uses Western missiles to hit Russia. You hear that? American bases. That's what is coming. American bases are among the first targets if Ukraine uses Western missiles to hit Russia. Moscow will trigger a contingency plan outlined by President Vladimir Putin in an event that Ukraine received permission to use Western supply long range missiles for strike deep inside russia listen to this foreign minister sergey lavrov has warned has warned listen to this putin earlier said any such eh? putin earlier said that any such strike will be treated by moscow as a direct attack by the countries that provided the weapons and eh? but i want to jump to this i want to jump here it says as soon as the decision is taken by the West to allow Ukraine to use long-range missiles. If it is taken, we will learn that. And the contingency mission by uh, 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 Vladimir Putin will already be in action. Lavrov told Russian Channel 1 broadcaster. He said, Dear, here is this, these are the targets, family. Russia is going to hit power plants, bridges. Def he said, hear that? Power plants, we're talking about across America. Because when you go here, what did the Lord says in the book of Isaiah 13? Isaiah 13. It says about prophecy about Babylon. That's America. And then when you come to verse 17, it says what? Well, Babylon, America, will fall to who? The Medes. But the Lord is talking about who? Russia. So listen to what they are saying. They're going to hit the power plant across America. Bridges, defense factories, and American bases are among the first target. Are you listening to this? Are you listening to this? That's why we glorify the Lord. That's why we constantly give in thanks for the Lord giving us the truth, for waking us up in the land of our captivity. And we are thinking upon his name, praising his name in the land of our captivity. Because this is what he, he gave this to our family, to his elect, to remember themselves. We can't thank the Lord enough. You cannot thank the Lord. To have this truth here, listen to what he's saying. Power plants, bridges, defense factories, Across America, eh? And American bases are among the first targets. That does not bode well for Scranton, Pennsylvania, where an army ammunition plant is located. 
Ya yeah, family. We say Tawada, Yahawa, Bahashem, Yahawashai, Bahashem, Rika Kodash. It says, how tennis remarks, let's read it. Any of you who have been distracted from the growing Russia-Ukraine conflict by the upset Israel-Iran troubles or who lost sight of the reality that Russia-Ukraine situation is heading for direct nuclear confrontation between Russia and the West are reminded the conflict hasn't gone away and NATO is now openly pushing for direct war which will get a lot of U.S. killed here in the U.S. Because that's what it says. Let's read this thing and give glory to the Lord. Yahweh Bashem Yahusha. I know we've been here many, many times, but let's read this in the NLT. Let's switch it up. Actually, no, though. Let's read it in the Amplified version. Let's just read it in the Amplified version. And Babylon will fall to the meat. Listen carefully. I will put the meat in motion against them. Who have no regard for silver and do not delight in gold and therefore cannot be bribed. The abos will cut down the young men, talking about their missiles of Babylon. Hear that? The abos will cut, meaning their missiles will cut down the young men of Babylon. They will take no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes will not look with compassion on the children because missiles have no feeling. Missiles are not going to say, oh, look at that beautiful baby. Look at how she's bouncing off the mother's lap. No, missiles don't have no feeling. Okay? Because the Lord is tired of this whore. Okay? And Babylon, the glory of the kingdom, the beauty of the Chaldees' pride, and talking about the elite, eh, will be like Sodom and Gomorrah when the Most High overthrew them. We know what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. Eh? That's right. Because of all those wickedness, the Lord burned it to the ground. And nobody was able to live there eh, since. Okay, and the same thing is about to happen to America. But let's read on. Let's see. When America is burned to the ground, after the fire settles, it's also going to tell you what is going to happen to America. Okay, let's read on. Verse 20. It says, Babylon will never be inhabited or lived in from generation to generation. Nor will the Arab pitch his tent there. Nor will the shepherds let their sheep lie down there. But desert creatures, and eh, nobody is like, do you hear what the Lord says? No, there ain't going to be no convenience store. No, the China, this is a Chinatown, Korean town, uh, African town, this town, 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 and the Indian, little India. No, none, none of that. None of that. The Lord is tired. And we are tired. It says here, but desert creatures, you hear that? But desert creatures will lie there. Sorry, will lie down there. And their houses will be full of owls. You hear that? Ostriches also will live there and wild goats will dance there. That's what is coming to America. Ostriches also will live there and wild goats will dance there. Hyenas will howl in their castles and jackals in their luxury palaces. Babylon's time has nearly come and her days will not be prolonged. Yes. Barakata Yahweh. Bahashem Yahushai. He said her days will not be prolonged. This should bring joy to your heart. The Lord is about to lift this place up. Eh? And that's right. He promised the, uh, the wild animals that indeed America is going to be, they're going to be blessed with America, the land after the fire settle. All type of animals are going to uh, come and live in America. And family, I think I'm going to end it. Actually, you know what, though? Let's play a quick video from our friend here. I think he had a quick update. I let U.S. CENTCOM hit Russia nukes armed on duty. Iran readies for all-out war. That's what the time we are living in. Eh? So this is Canadian prepper. We're going to allow him to speak for a few, few minutes. And then we're going to wrap this up. And family, when it's all said and done, I hope you are edified again. Shalom. Let's go. Dastardly ill thanks to the illnesses that my children keep bringing home, preparing my immune system for the apocalypse. There's got to be a silver lining in there somewhere. Now, this is what's going down. U.S. Central Command that oversees all Middle Eastern military operations remains in the bullseye target zone of this Hurricane Milton, which is now a Category 3. Now, originally... This was the original projection. It was supposed to go right into Tampa. Then they readjusted it. Sarasota was supposed to be where the eye of the storm 
when so you can see this was the projected pathway here but you can see the actual eye of the storm is right over US Central Command that means that they're going to get the worst of the storm surge uh, the winds and the precipitation now fortunately it appears as though the hurricane is kind of breaking apart which means that it's likely going to be downgraded quickly to a category two maybe a category one although I presume that the storm surge is still going to be very significant and what that means for the war front is that this CENTCOM base that oversees all the logistics and the refueling and the naval assets and just military operations everywhere could be underwater and so Biden had the theatrical phone call with President Netanyahu and in order to assuage his constituents he said well you can go to war with Iran but just don't target the nuclear sites knowing full well that once Israel attacks Iran Iran's gonna attack back and then Israel's gonna have all the justifications and then the US is gonna be right on board because it's gonna be perfectly timed right around the election to retaliate full stop against all of the Iranian assets within the region be they military infrastructure or their energy sector and nuclear sectors so this is the mother of all black swans I mean this is talk about a co coincidence man that CENTCOM gets taken out on the day that they're getting ready to go to war with Iran makes you wonder if there's a divine hand in all of this now I'm gonna give you the lowdown of what's going on in the world we're gonna change up the backstop real quick here just show you some visuals this is was the hurricane when it was descending onto Florida you had tornadoes all kinds of lightning activity around here and of course it's barreling dead center towards Tampa as we speak to wipe out US Central Command at least put it out of commission temporarily here's what's going down all of these things are connected we have a canceled peace summit that was supposed to take place with a Russian representation there but that has now been canceled and they're chalking it up to this hurricane but I believe uh, the reasons for cancellation are far worse than we know we have nukes mobile ICBM platforms in Russia putting on put on rolling combat status meaning that they're in the highest state of readiness ready to fire there is no more nuclear treaty there is no Russian ambassador in the United States as a de-escalation channel anymore they're saying that they're going to replace them but typically you don't remove an ambassador before replacing them or at least I assume that's not how it works so this ambassador very unceremoniously left the United States under the radar it wasn't reported by any Western mainstream it was reported by the Russian media of course and this is a sign that things are getting very very tense on the nuclear front but you're not hearing about it all you're hearing about is the Russians are pushing back the Ukrainians in the Donbass and that is why things are getting so tense because the Ukrainians have already breached the Russian red line they've attacked two more ammunition depots inside Russia in the last 24 hours and they've attacked the Crimean oil refinery which is one of the biggest which while not a red line that is in accordance with the new revised version of the nuclear doctrine it still is a uh, provocative uh, attack which of course is going to cause Russia to raise the nuclear alert status even higher and that is evidenced in the Russian ministry spokesperson Maria Zakharova issuing a warning once again saying that as a result of the West destructive policies the level of nuclear danger has seriously increased we warned the US and other NATO members to come to their senses and fully understand the catastrophic consequences of their extremely dangerous course Russia of course recently issued a warning to 1 million Israeli dual citizens that they should come home before the shooting starts because again they know the war with Iran is just days possibly days away if not weeks away I would say that this thing is about to start soon however the Israelis still are quite bogged down in southern Lebanon so I'm suspecting 
that they might try to kick that Iranian can down the road a little bit longer until they can get a handle on things because they barely established a foothold on the ground anyways in southern Lebanon. But they might be thinking to themselves, well, if we can take out Iran, then all of these other proxy groups are going to crumble quite easily. So that might be the strategy that they take, and that's going to have grave implications for the energy infrastructure of the region. Now, according to one military analyst, and take this with a grain of salt, but there's a lot of circumstantial evidence to support this, S-400 have been detected in Iran. That's one of Russia's most advanced missile defense systems. It's been detected in Iran by an RQ-4B Global Hawk drone. Now, they're saying that this might be part of the reason for the delay in the counter-strike by the Israelis because now they have to factor this into their offensive calculus that Russia or Iran does have Russians on the ground assisting them with this more advanced missile defense system, which will, of course, add to their multi-layered system of defense that they already have. So that means that they have to go back to the drawing board. Now, what is the attack from Israel going to look like? It could be anything from radars to missile defense to missile silos to nuclear facilities to oil refineries to naval assets to ports. Uh, everything's on the table. The question is, is it going to come from the sky or is it going to come asymmetrically? Because uh, Gallant said something very interesting today. He said that our attack is going to be very surprising and the Iranians are not going to know what hit him. Remember, the Hanie assassination, it's still a subject of debate how it happened, but the consensus is, is that it was an act of sabotage and it happened on the ground inside the country by people who were obviously spies, uh, saboteurs working inside the country. So I would not be surprised if the attack did not come from the skies, but was cyber in nature and manifested as an act of sabotage on the ground. No matter how it comes, Iran has said that they are committed to retaliation. Now, a friend of mine floated the idea that what the Iranians might do in response is something unexpected as well, and that is attempt to take hostages. Uh, U.S. Okay, family, we're going to stop it there. And we're going to end it here. Revelation 11 verse 14. It says the second war is past. The second war was referring to the second world war. And, and behold, the third war, which is what? The third world war cometh quickly. We know the second world war was 39, 1939 to 1945. You hear that? And now the third war cometh quickly. And then it tells you that what? Let's go here and end it here. Let's go to the book of Second Ezra chapter 6. We have to... You know, tell the whole world that, yeah, the self-proclaimed white man, his kingdom is coming to an end. And he will never, ever rule over anybody. Never, ever. And never, ever rule over anybody. From here, he's going straight to the bottom. And Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 6. Then did I consider these things, and they were all, and they, they all were made through me alone. Who is me? That's why Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. And, and through none other, by me also they shall be ended. But by what? By none other. He created it, he's going to end it. Okay? He said, Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times, or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? And but hear what the Lord says. He says, And he said unto me, From, from Abraham. Our forefathers unto Isaac. These are the promises from Abraham to Isaac and Jacob. You see, the promise is not for all the nations. The nation that the Lord talks about is the nation of Israel. Again, this is a family affair. And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob hand held first the heel of Esau. Meaning what? This, this movie is about two characters, Jacob and Esau. There was nobody else between them. Okay? He said, for Esau, self-proclaimed white man today. And today they call themselves European. They call themselves Caucasian. They see it. Majority of Americans are looking at their life. They said, no, I think American dream is over. That's why. And then from here, they're all going into captivity. That's what the Bible says. 
these are not my words. Revelation 13, 9 and 10 tells you, he, if he, he that have here, let him hear. He that lead it into captivity. It didn't say may or sometime. It says shall. We're going to get it. It said for Esau is the end of the world. You hear that? For Esau, the white man, the European, the Caucasian is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. The so-called Negroes, Latinos, African American, Native American, Native Indians. Let that sink in. Yes. The so-called savages, the so-called black. Yeah, that's the name that you've given us. The slaves. The slaves are going to become what? The slave masters. Because here it tells you, let's go here. Because we are telling you before it happens. So our power, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, will get all the glory. Eh? Revelation, what did I say? Revelation uh, 13, 10, right? Revelation 13, 10. Let's start from verse 9. It says here, if any man have an ear, let him hear. If the Spirit is working with you, if you can see, if the Lord wants you to listen, to hear this, the Lord will give you the ear to, to hear. Okay? Because if you've been blinded, if you can see, the Lord blinded you. Because this thing here, if it's a privilege, it's a, it's, it's a, the Lord doesn't want everybody. He has an elect and we pray that we are part of his elect. It says, he that leadeth into captivity. Who leadeth into captivity? That's right. The self-proclaimed white man shall go into captivity. He said, he didn't say may, he said shall. Look up the word shall. Shall go into captivity. He that kill it with the sword. Colombo, Christopher Colombo said he couldn't put his, his sword down for one hour. Because what? He was slaughtering, killing. Because at the end of the day, these people here, family, they are wicked. And there's no compassion in them. He killed with the sword. Guess what? You shall, he said, you, you, said you live by the sword, you shall also die by the sword. Yahweh is coming. He's bringing the ultimate sword. You think you have a sword? Wait till you see Yahweh Shai's sword. Eh? He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. We are patiently waiting, man. The Lord says, wait here upon me till I rise up to the prey. The Lord is going to rise up to the prey. So, beloved, I hope you are edified. Again, Shabbat Shalom. I pray this message find you in perfect peace. We're almost out of here, man. Continue to stay prayed up. Repent. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. That's why the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Shalom.